Hi everyone, I'm Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study and now I'm back from my break and in these lavish surroundings I'm going to give you the latest updates from the app. I was talking to you about the rates of COVID which are still coming down, comparing them to the huge increase in colds we've seen in the last few weeks, which are now three times as likely as you having COVID and some of these cold viruses are quite bad. I've got also some insights to share with you about the big IF study including how skipping breakfast correlates with snacking and how many of you choose to eat later in the day versus uh, having most of your meals earlier. But let's dive straight into this data on intermittent fasting, which you've been giving us. So more than 100,000 of you have now uh, joined this study, which is amazing. Uh, about 25,000 of you um, have now extended this beyond the initial three week period. You're finding it so exciting. And we want you to extend this as many times as you like. So the longer the data uh, we get, the better. Now, if you look at the first graph, you can see that um, during the fasting weeks shown here by the dashed line after day seven, you're doing pretty well at decreasing your eating hours to under 10. Uh, so really well done for sticking with that experiment. And we're we collected lots of uh, detail about your eating habits from the surveys you've been filling in. And we're gonna see how this changes over the course of the study. Now, one big thing we've been looking at is that people who chose to have their eating window um, early or late, and we're calling this group um, who are practicing mid TRE, which means they've finished, you finished your meals by 6 p.m. generally. Uh, compared to late TRE, but only one in five of you, about 20%, wanted to go for this uh, finishing by 6 p.m., the mid TRE. Rest of you found it easier, in theory at least, to uh, go for the late TRE, which means you, you skip the early uh, meal opportunities in the day. Not a great deal of difference between the total number of meals eaten, um, but there was a big difference actually in number of snacks eaten. And remember, snacks in the UK often provide nearly a quarter of our energy uh, calorie requirements. So could be a big factor. Uh, we're not quite sure why this is, but those who finish their TRE uh, later in the day, the sort of late TRE ones, um, and skipped in the morning, seem to have more snacks than the other way around. Um, could be because those who start later in the day end up snacking more. In the evenings, we need we had need to dissect this a bit more. And when asked to rank the size of meals, um, perhaps unsurprisingly, the what we call the mid TRE, the early ones, rank lunch as the biggest meal, and those you were doing the later TRE ranked your uh, supper dinner as the biggest meal. Um, and those who skip breakfast before the study will be used to that. Uh, as you would expect, more likely to practice this late TRE because I guess you'd found it wasn't particularly hard for you. Now, looking at skipping breakfast as a diet pattern, we saw those who skip breakfast and were doing uh, intermittent fasting tend to snack more than those who were doing um, intermittent fasting alone who hadn't skipped breakfast. Um, suggest that Possibly eating breakfast could lower desire for snacking later in the day. We're going to delve more into that in, in future. Now, of course, uh, at Zoe, we believe in this holistic approach. Uh, it's not just about the food. It's not just about when you have it. Other things are important as well. Um, sleeping is also important. And we looked at so-called chronotypes, uh, your natural sleep rhythm, and found that one in six of you, 15%, are actually self-reported night owls. So you, the midpoint in sleep is usually after 4.30 in the morning, whereas a uh, greater majority, 50% of you are early birds with a midpoint in your sleep of before 2.30 a.m. And looking at the snacking habits of the both of those, um, we can see that if you did go to bed later, um, you're more likely to be either sort of quite a big snacker or quite a low snacker. There's quite a little noise there. Uh, and generally, night owls are snacking more. Some of this might be due to age, that night owls tend to be uh, younger. 
but uh, it's also possible that um, appetite levels are different. Um, we found that uh, also you, you tend to sleep more on days off than working days. That's not a surprise, really. Um, but how much the difference is in your working day and your, your weekend or your day off is what we call uh, this social jet lag. So if you're waking up an hour later than you would normally, that's an hour of this, this jet lag. And um, what was interesting is that 38% of you, that's nearly four out of 10, had no social jet lag, meaning you're, you, you've got your set uh, sleep times, which are pretty similar in uh, work and, and non-work scenarios. Uh, but most of us have some form of social jet lag and the average is 45 minutes. Now, we know this is associated with some um, unhealthy lifestyle eating patterns um, and has been associated with uh, health risks such as blood sugar levels going up, uh, fat levels going up and increased risk of metabolic disease like diabetes. So we do suggest trying to get enough sleep in a consistent way and so you minimize uh, the amount of sleep you're getting in your work days and your rest days. Um, obviously there's always the occasional exception but um, in general all the data is pointing when is that the least that difference the better it is for your health. Um, coming back to diet patterns we found that most people who are doing intermittent fasting are also have done or are doing low carb diets and skipping breakfasts. And if we look at this Venn diagram here, we can see that about 11.8% uh, of people, 12% of people are, are both skipping breakfast and doing intermittent fasting, whilst 9%, 9.1% uh, follow both low carb type diets and intermittent fasting. And those following uh, intermittent fasting have generally uh, higher uh, food quality scores, plant diversity index scores, when compared to those who follow other diets, um, such as just low carb. So they tend to be eating more plants in general, and this is, we know is good for your gut microbiome. So it seems that intermittent fasters are a self-selecting group that might be slightly healthier. We found that those that had high numbers of plants in their diet, better quality scores, uh, we'd found in our previous studies, you might remember a couple of years ago, to be less likely to get uh, severe COVID and to recover quicker if they did. So it does affect your immune status as well. Some fascinating insights. So thanks to the 100,000 of you doing that study, keep that data coming into us. We'll keep giving you uh, feedback as it comes in. Uh, back to COVID, um, numbers are continuing to fall. Um, but we've still got 144,000 odd cases daily, which is only down 15% from two weeks ago. Still means that around one in 30 people have COVID. Uh, the R rate is now flattened out to about one, so it's not really dropping very fast. Uh, and this does seem to be affecting pretty much all age groups. But again, uh, slightly worrying is the fact that kids are uh, looking as if they're on the way up again. So um, it's a bit of a mixed picture. It doesn't look like it's gonna fall much further and it could stay stable or even um, start drifting up again. Now, what's really interesting is what I think all of us are hearing and from friends and family is everyone's getting really quite nasty colds at the moment. These rates are going up and you can see from the um, orange line here that's ticked up again. So you've at least three times as likely to get uh, a cold than COVID at the moment. Uh, COVID's going down, uh, colds are going up. And at the moment, most of these are children. And then as we know, they tend to pass it on to parents and grandparents. And um, there seem to be uh, more of these going on in the north of the country than in the south. Um, and this is really the first time we're able to track cold uh, infections in such a detailed way, thanks to uh, your help and uh, the system we set in place. But 
In conclusion, COVID is going down rather slowly though, and it may be starting to uh, uh, even out. Um, colds are increasing and remaining high, and therefore risk of infection of those is still pretty high. Um, in terms of the uh, diet studies, if you go to bed later, you're more likely to snack more. Um, and this is, this is uh, true if you're practicing intermittent fasting later, just be aware that something in your brain is gonna make you want to have snacks. You may want to fight that impulse. Uh, try to avoid sleeping in too often at weekends for longer. Uh, a little bit's fine, but um, if you overdo it, that does have uh, consequences for your health. Um, looks like you're really good at sticking to this 10 hour eating window. We weren't sure how many people would do it, uh, but it's really good news that so many of you are managing to do it, but we are also interested in those that find it really difficult. So don't be worried to tell us that you've, you find it hard or you've failed. This information is really important to us. Uh, still time for you to get involved. If you're not doing the if big if study and if you know friends and family want to do it, do share uh, the study through the app. Uh, finally, do like and subscribe to this channel, share the app with friends and family and support science and keep logging and talk to you again soon and happy fasting.